This is Dr. Thomas Klein. I'm coming to you from Raleigh, North Carolina. We had to close the draperies because here in Raleigh, North Carolina, we had our first blizzard uh, that lasted approximately four minutes. But we're all huddled in here and getting our snow shovels ready. So the topic for today is a discovery we have made at JATH Educational. Um, our researchers have come up with an answer to the question as why we are jailing doctors who prescribe opiates. I know a guy that's in prison for 40 years. He never sold a single drug. He got tricked by people and he was arrested for not catching the criminals. Because we have such a strong fear of opioid uh, addiction, they were putting doctors in prison. I know another physician who one of his patients committed suicide and he never sold a single drug either life in prison. That's Stephen Henson. First fellow is Joel Smithers. Joel has five children. He's 37 years old. He's in prison for 40 years. Manuel Noriega also was committed to federal prison for 40 years. So why is it that the emphasis is now not on running around trying to arrest heroin addicts, which is not appropriate either. Now we're running around arresting doctors who prescribe pain medicine. It almost seems like we don't care about heroin anymore. And now we are concerned about oxycodone being on the street. So we found out what happened. This is a special project in our group. We put special projects in these colored photos. It's called a blue project. And what we found was a paper we hadn't seen before from 2006. And the paper is called Increasing Deaths from Opioid Analgesics in the United States. Opioid Analgesics. What's that? Pain pills written by Leonard Pelosi and a guy named Daniel Budnitz and another third person, uh, C. Yong Lee. Uh, these people uh, said that they've reanalyzed the data and it's not really heroin that's driving the opioid epidemic. It's prescription drugs. That's not true. Okay, we have really looked at this paper and we're having some forensic people look at it too because in this paper is a lot of distorted truths. I'll give you an example. They start off by saying rapid increase during the 1990s reflecting number of deaths attributed to narcotics and unspecified drugs. Wait a minute now. Attributed to unspecified drugs and narcotics. They're lumping those together. That's not what you do when you're a scientist. Between 1999, by the way, that was the year CDC started collecting data. That's why 1999 is always mentioned. The number of opioid analgesic poisonings, that means overdose deaths, on death certificates increased 90%. First of all, no science paper should ever get past editors using death certificates. Death certificates are about the same as a Ouija board because 50% of them are wrong. Nobody, in, uh, nobody of good caliber science would ever use death certificates as a data source, but they did because they are pushing to prove their point. And their point is ideological. Their point is that the fear of addiction phobia must be dealt with by removing substances this has been on their minds for a hundred years, hasn't worked yet, and it's not going to work because they have it wrong. Opioid medications are different than other ones and they are more genetically determined. But let's get back to this. Okay, attributed to narcotics and unspecified drugs. We mentioned that. That's kind of not true. Okay, now, increase of 91%. This is a mathematical trick that people in the field of epidemiology, like these two, would never normally make if they weren't pushing an agenda. This is our example of the senators. You've got 100 senators. 
you've got two senators want to pass a bill. That's 2% of the senators. They get two more senators to want to pass the bill. Now they got 4% of the senators. But you can say that the number of senators that don't like this bill have increased 100%. That's the trick. It's called percentage of a percentage, which is not allowed in mathematics. That's a trick. What you should say is the senator, the number of senators want to pass the bill has increased by 2%, not 100%. Okay, so we don't know. Death certificates increased 91%. Depends on the original number. Depends on what the trends were before. And then it says, but heroin was only 12%. So, wait a minute. Maybe prescription drugs are really what's behind the opioid epidemic. National epidemic of drug poisonings began in 1990s. That's not true. It's been going on since 1970. Prescription for opioid analgesics, here we come. The prescriptions for pain medicines have increased in this time frame and may have contributed to the increases in drug poisonings. May have. May. The word may is conditional. That means it's the same as possible. Possible in proper logic means if it doesn't come true you don't have to defend it. Whereas if you say something is probable then if it doesn't happen, you have to defend it logically. So they're violating basic rules of logic. You can see we've looked at this in detail. Okay, so here's their numbers. They have a little chart with numbers. And this is the key thing. Deaths of narcotics and psycho dysleptics, they're making up words, and other specified drugs by drug poisonings over three years. So they give the number of uh, opioid deaths with heroin, without heroin. What they're doing is they're categorizing prescription drugs. Well, wait a minute. Are these prescribed by doctors? the ones that are now in federal prison? Nope. Where are these prescription drugs coming from? They're being stolen. 80% of prescription drugs on the street are not prescribed. They're stolen. So you see how you can manipulate the words. You can say there's lots of prescription drugs on the street, but you forget to say, but they're not prescribed. They're stolen. All the drugs on the street, all the opioids on the street, except for heroin, are prescription drugs. Heroin or diamorphine is a prescription drug everywhere. So we've classified this paper as a potential falsehood uh, based on biases and a long list of, uh, of things to disqualify this paper. Uh, we're going to have this paper looked at um, by some editors, and we may ask for a retraction. This is what started it. You can look it up yourself. This is what started the attack on prescription drugs. This is what's responsible for the seven to eight million horror stories that we're hearing of people being forced off their prescription opioids in order to help the Overdose problem? Wait a minute. The overdoses last year were the highest ever. In four years, they've gone up much faster than they did before. So instituting this plan did not stop overdoses. All it did was ruin the lives of several million people and significant number of suicides, people who couldn't tolerate the pain anymore. Now, the next thing we found out was that Leonard Pelosi at the CDC, uh, by the way, he works in the section that developed the CDC guidelines. Uh, Leonard Pelosi then went to Congress with the same ideas two years later. 
he appears before the Senate Judiciary Committee and he tells them the same things. Increased category of involvement with opioid prescription drugs. Involvement. Increase of 160% involved. A lot of this is due to increased reporting on the death certificates. The death certificates are no good to start with. And if the death certificates aren't coded, they use codes if they aren't coded for these medicines, the only way to do a proper investigation is what's called a psychological um, uh, autopsy. That means you gather up as much information as you can, you talk to people, you review the medical records. None of these studies reviewed the medical records. They just looked at death certificates. So this information was fed to an important federal committee in the Senate called the Judicial Committee and they basically convinced the committee and here's the testimony that heroin was not the problem anymore it was prescription drugs and therefore doctors that's what started it now there's a couple of uh, we had um, some reactions to the original paper in 2006 um, very strenuous commentaries saying, you know, what are you people doing? You're, you're implying that limiting medical use will have an effect on reversing this disturbing trend? See, right away they caught on that this paper was going to cause people to be limited. This is 2006 now. This is 10 years before the CDC guidelines came out, and it originated, guess where? Guess where these two people were from? The CDC. Guess what group Leonard Pelosi joined five years later when it was formed? Prop. The Physicians for Responsible Opioid Prescribing is, as described by one FDA official, lunatic fringe. These people are pain nihilists. They don't believe that pain should be treated, that you should just think about it and you'll be fine. These people are not scientists. These people are ideologues, dangerous ideologues. And so Leonard Pelosi joins this group while he's still working at the CDC. So what do you suppose is going on? Now, are you ready for the final piece? Guess who chaired the committee 2008 in the Senate listening to this and being convinced that prescription drugs were causing the problem. The chairman of the committee was Biden. Joe Biden. So this is how it got started. This is how it got implanted into the minds of the senators. Imagine sitting there and here comes Dr. Pelosi the expert medical epidemiologist from the CDC. I mean, this is impressive. A lot more impressive than me being there, you know? And so this guy tells them that it's the prescription drugs that are causing the epidemic that's been going on since 1950 because of untreated heroin disease. That's what's really causing it. So all of the doctors being rounded up and put in prison This is the man that started it. Because all of a sudden doctors are causing things, not drug lords. One of our patients talked to a DEA um, regional boss and he said, we're not going after uh, uh, drug sellers and street uh, dispensers anymore unless they're from uh, South America. We're going after doctors because it switched. You see, in 2006, it switched. This man switched it. He switched it from heroin to prescription drugs. We're going to have as many people as we can write Congress and discuss with them what it's like to be taken off a pain medicine that was properly prescribed and properly 
administered. And for many years, these people have permanent, long-term, untreatable diseases. And now they are the enemy. Thank you.